It couldn't have been a sleepier Sunday morning in Shefford, a town that'll soon be buzzing with by-election activity. Tucked away behind a church is Nadine Dorries' former constituency office. She's resigned, has she? We met this woman. Oh, good news. As we wandered round to take a look. I'm a nurse, so I went to meet her at a surgery um, in Ampthill, and she told me she'd support the fact that, you know, we wanted to up the wages. But um, when I actually looked, when it went through Parliament, she voted against it. Two and a half months after signalling her intention to resign, last night, Nadine Dorries officially did it. And some of her constituents all but applauded. Resigned, has she? She stepped down. Good, good, good. She's stepped down. Has she? Oh, well, she were good for this county. Who's Nadine Dorries? That, that's the only comment I'd make. The last thing I would want to do would be to cause a by-election in my constituency. And here we are. Two months on from that statement, a letter of resignation that reads like a CV and the political equivalent of a burn book. In the letter published in the Daily Mail behind a paywall, she says to the Prime Minister, the country is run by a zombie parliament where nothing meaningful has happened. What exactly has been done or have you achieved? There are a group, a small group of very powerful men, both at the heart of the Conservative Party and at the heart of Downing Street, who very much control events. And I don't think many people are actually aware of that. But what it also represents is an absolute democratic corruption at the heart, or a corruption of democracy, rather, at the heart of the Conservative Party. Which presumably, from her perspective, excludes Boris Johnson, who she's backed relentlessly, describing him in her letter as the victim of a political assassination. She's uh, written a personal letter to the Prime Minister. Um, she's entitled to that view, but... Uh, you know, the, uh, I think people are kind of tired of raking over the coals of the Boris Johnson government. We need to get on and uh, get on this uh, country properly and, uh, you know, uh, make people feel that progress before the next election. What she hasn't mentioned is the genesis of this protracted resignation, the fact that she didn't get a peerage. In her resignation letter, Nadine Dorries hints at a self-proclaimed legacy. She says she's leaving Mid-Bedfordshire as one of the safest Conservative seats in the country with a 25,000 majority. But polling by Opinium last month predicts that the Conservatives here are on course for the biggest by-election defeat in history. Last month, Labour overturned a huge Conservative majority in the Selby and Ainsty by-election, triggered by an MP who had also been overlooked for a peerage. Labour's success at the moment appears to be defined by the Conservative Party's individual egos and messes rather than on what your party actually stands for. Well, actually, when it comes to the cost of living crisis, for example, yes, there is huge anger about the civil war in the Conservatives stopping the government, it seems, from taking the action that's needed. But there is strong support for Labour's policies. The Lib Dems also fancy their chances of snapping up the seat after themselves overturning a massive Conservative majority in the Somerset and Froome by-election. Bringing matters back to this constituency, Nadine Dorries has rebutted these comments made by the Prime Minister earlier this month. I think people deserve to have uh, an MP that represents them wherever they are. Saying she's had a team working with constituents throughout the summer. Do you think she was good at understanding what the community needed and what the constituents needed? I can't see how you can be unless you actually spend time in the area and actually speaking to people and understanding what the current issues are. Do you think that... The Conservatives have got a good chance of holding on to the seat? I don't think they've got any chance of holding on to the seat, to be honest. I think the uh, state that everything's in, not a hope. Perhaps by-elections are innately hopeful, though, inevitably bringing some kind of change. Well, joining me now from North Dorset is the Liberal Democrat leader, Sir Ed Davey. Thanks for joining us. You, you came a pretty distant third the last time Nadine Doris's seat was fought. Why aren't you just giving Labour a clear run at it? Well, I've visited the seat uh, several times now, including just last week, and it's really clear that the Liberal Democrats are the challengers at uh, this by-election. Um, we've come third uh, and beaten the Conservatives in several by-elections recently, as you, as you know, Krishnan. In North Shropshire, we came from third and beat the Conservatives in that by-election. In Tifton-Honiton, we came from third and 
beat the Conservatives in another by-election, uh, all in the last 18 months. So we go into this uh, campaign very excited. We know it's going to be tough in the sense that there's a big Tory majority, but Liberal Democrats have, have made a real habit of overturning those. And, you know, when yeah. we look at Mid-Bedfordshire, it's the sort of classic rural blue wall seat that has been turning Liberal Democrat. But there, there is a risk, isn't there, that you divide the opposition vote, you let the Conservatives through. It is, after all, a very big majority that you're trying to overturn, and you give Rishi Sunak a huge autumn bonus. Well, um, I've campaigned with our candidate, Emma Holland Lindsay, and she's uh, really making waves there. She was born in the uh, county. She's raised in Bedfordshire. Her family is in, in Bedfordshire, lives there uh, now. And uh, because I think a rural seat like Mid Bedfordshire likes their candidate to be local, to understand the local issues, and particularly uh, given the Dean Doris uh, was so absent, I think we really do stand a great chance. But, but is I that... think. Uh, when people wake up after the... I mean, are, are you going to stick with this though, all the way? I mean, is there no sense in which you are prepared to talk about sensible sort of get-the-government-out strategies around elections? You know, we, we, we thought there was going to be some sort of quiet coordination, didn't we? Uh, no, th there has never been any packs or deals in these by-elections, and uh, what's been the result in seats like mid Bedfordshire, these rural blue wall seats, it's been the Liberal Democrats who've won. So um, uh, I'm increasingly confident, given that evidence, and you don't have to believe me or the Liberal Democrats, look at what the bookies say. You know, they're putting money on the line, yeah. and they're making the Liberal Democrats odds-on favourite. So, you know, I I'm increasingly confident that when people wake up after polling day in this by-election, they'll either have a Conservative MP or a Liberal Democrat MP. And the chances of them getting Conservative MP are uh, increased if a few people do vote Labour. Uh, they'll still, Labour will still come in a poor third, but um, I'm really encouraging people to get behind Emma Holland Lindsay so he can beat the Conservatives uh, and show well, that this government's time is up. We're clearly sort of in election, general election mode already, even though it's more than a year away. Um, Labour today saying they won't be bringing in any wealth taxes, they won't be putting up capital gains tax or any of the stuff that the Conservative Party might, might try and sort of scare voters about with Keir Starmer. Um, when are you going to sort of unveil your, your bigger vision for Britain? Well, we've been the ones leading the way in the cost of living debate. Uh, Liberal Democrats were the first party to call for a windfall tax on the oil and gas companies to pay for uh, and to be able to afford a really generous package to help people and businesses struggling with paying their energy bills. And a whole host of areas in the cost of living and the NHS, it's been Liberal Democrats putting forward uh, uh, good, good, constructive uh, ideas. Clearly, the nearer we get to the general election, you'll hear even more uh, from us. But um, in this cost of living crisis, it would be a huge mistake for any incoming government to put up taxes. Um, that's, that's not right. People are really struggling at the moment. And the Even real on the challenge rich. at the next election is for... Um, listen, I think everyone is struggling. We do think, um, as we, ex we showed with windfall tax, uh, that, that some uh, of these large companies can afford to pay a bit more. We've argued also, for example, for a sewage tax okay. on the water utilities because they've been, they, they, they've been not doing their job yeah. and we need to tackle up uh, Sorry, tackle the sewage. So uh, we're, we're, not, we're not afraid of making those arguments, but we do need to make sure that, that ordinary people aren't hit by more taxes. Thank, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thanks.